So I uh, started to take apart the acetylene uh, regulator here of these uh, this Air Products pair. Um, and then I found something that I figured I should probably uh, <laughs> go get the video camera for and uh, take a video of it. Um, so on this one here, I've already taken this one apart and cleaned it up. And I was super, super happy taking this thing apart. Um, cause obviously on the outside, you can see it's got some years on it and everything. Um, but on the inside, it looked absolutely like just, you know, completely brand new. Um, you know, from looking at the internals of this, it looked like it, you know, like almost never was used anyways. Um, you look at the outside of it and it's got a couple dings on it and everything. Um, but yeah, the inside looked like it might as well have been made yesterday or something. Um, and I, re I really like these, um, they have a, uh, a thrust bearing on the adjustment knob here. So the adjustment knob is extremely smooth, um, which I'll show that here in a minute. Um, but yeah, so wanted to get these cleaned up and start using them. Um, and then on the acetylene one here, you know, it's got red knob on it. And uh, this is the adjustment screw for it. So you can kind of see working back and forth there and um, knob just sits over it like so and then the little nut goes on the end there. But this is what I was talking about, about that little uh, thrust bearing and it's got a little washer that it goes against. So really, really um, awesome that stuff used to be made like this. And this part here looks fine. I don't see anything wrong with that whatsoever. Um, it came with uh, it came with this different style, the acetylene regulator. Anyways, came with this different style uh, fitting. And my understanding is that this one here is called a CGA three hundred. <laughs> And from my understanding that this fitting is common on the 300 cubic foot of settling bottles. Um, I've got, and most people have, a 145 cubic foot of settling bottle. And so then uh, this regulator came with this adapter here to go from, I think, the CGA 510, but the POL fitting, like a propane tank or whatever has, um, to this one here. And uh, I noticed that on this one here, it doesn't have a filter or anything on it. Um, it just goes completely straight through here. And actually, it doesn't look like this one was even ever set up for one. Um, this is the POL fitting that I bought to go on this regulator here. And this one has got, I've always heard them referred to as a filter. Um, the oxygen's got one as well, but I would imagine that it would also act a little bit as a flashback arrester. Um, you know, how much, how much it would do, I don't know, but I think it would do something. But yeah, so this one here, there's like weld spatter and shit on the glass and it is actually glass or crystal or whatever on here. And I found a uh, replacement uh, glass for here that is in the mail um hasn't got here yet that gauge appears to be fine and working um this one here obviously you can see it's stuck at i don't know would be you know 24 pounds 25 pounds something like that and um didn't know why that was <coughs> i hadn't used this regulator at all because it had the damage gauge on it i figured you know maybe somebody dropped it or something like that but there's no evidence um, of like a you know severe impact to it or anything and then I sort of take apart or take the uh, gauge off of here <laughs> and I noticed black soot on the end of the fitting there and hopefully you can hear that there's um, some shit rattling around in there I haven't opened this up yet, because at least on the oxygen 
regulator anyways, this ring is on here extremely tight and I don't want to risk damaging it. Um, so leave that for another day. And then started pulling the regulator apart a little more and oh, what do you know, there's black soot on there. So if there's black soot on here, then what that means is that at some point that this regulator had a flashback, make it all the way back to the regulator here. Um, and uh, which is pretty scary, um, you know, uh, that is how bad things happen essentially. Um, these regulators, when I got them, they did not come with any kind of check valves or um, extra flashback arresters. And the torch that I got with these regulators um, was one of the older style torches that didn't have built-in check valves or flashback, uh, flashback arresters or anything like that. Um, so yeah, what this means is that oxygen uh, has backfed from the oxygen regulator all the way up to the torch, presumably to the tip, and then all the way back and put oxygen into this regulator. And then something happened, um, some spark or whatever, um, or flashback all the way from the tip again, and, uh, you know, detonated essentially inside of this regulator. Um, from outward appearances, there was no obvious signs of anything going on, um, except for that gauge being tweaked out at 20 whatever PSI. Um, but the high pressure gauge is perfectly clean. So it didn't make it to the high pressure side of this regulator and uh, presumably didn't make it back to the tank either. Um, I would assume that we would see something on there, but had it again, you know, made it back to the tank, um, you know, that would have, you know, probably blown somebody's shop all to shit and probably killed them in the process. Um, so then I pulled the uh, front cap off here and, uh, you know, I was hoping that it just damaged the gauge and, you know, maybe I could clean this thing up and, you know, get to using it right away. And then I noticed that this diaphragm is actually bent. And you can see three impressions, one, two, three. Well, let's see, one, two, three, like so. And the diaphragm is actually bulged outwards. Well, if you look here, there's three castings inside of here. And so what had happened here is that the pressure uh, from the uh, uh, oxygen and acetylene detonating, for lack of a better term, behind this uh, diaphragm here actually tried to, you know, blow this cap off the front and push this diaphragm out. Thankfully, this held, and I don't see any damage to it, but it obviously, uh, you know, left its mark on that diaphragm there. And I haven't pulled the diaphragm off yet. So we'll see what's behind that. The oxygen regulator has got a built-in flashback arrestor, and I'm assuming that's why we only see evidence of the flashback on the low side and not the high side. But uh, we'll see here in just a second. Ugh. Didn't realize I was out of frame there. So all black and sooty and everything, but actually no Whoops. I don't see anything too terribly horrible here. And um hate to admit it, but I'm debating about maybe, maybe potentially trying to bend this diaphragm back and use it. Oh, that's interesting. I forget how the oxygen was, but this here is clearly soft rubber, but then in the center there is a, a harder material. Well, and actually now if I kind of wipe the soot and everything off, I guess you can kind of see that a little better. And I guess you can see the 
<laughs> the mark on the diaphragm there. But, um, yeah, let's take this the valve off. Might have to stick this in the vise, we'll see. Oh, no, okay, got it. Needs a good cleaning. And there is the built-in flashback arrestor in the uh, regulator here. And thankfully it doesn't look like it got past the, uh, oops, doesn't look like it got past the valve. Or maybe it did just a little bit. And then, shit, I don't have a little pick with me, but there's a little seat down inside of here that this, well, O-ring seat, depending on which way you want to look at it, but this part pushes into the uh, little rubber guy there to stop the gas flow. But, yeah, fuck. Um... If somebody knows where to get parts for these things, you know, including that gauge, diaphragms, and all that kind of stuff for these air products, um, please, please let me know because I really, really like these air product regulators. Um, I think they look really cool and I think they're built really well and um, <laughs> it can survive some level of a flashback anyways and not completely blow up in your face. Um, but uh, I'm sure that that was still probably a pretty hair raising uh, ordeal there at the same time who knows maybe the guy using the torch didn't even fucking know what happened um, the guy that I bought these regulators from uh, bought them bought the regulators and the torch and the bottles and all that kind of stuff expecting to use them and I guess never did um, and I guess uh, the guy that or the people that he got it from had never used it either or at least in a very very long time but um, yeah I took the acetylene regulator off one of my other gauges and uh, cleaned it all up and everything well I mean not very much I just kind of cleaned the plastic off so you could read the read the uh, dial face there because I thought all I had to do was just replace this damaged air products one here and be good to go but man yeah. so there you go um, like I said if you know where to get parts for these things if you have parts for these things if you have a set of these regulators lying around uh, taking up you know space collecting dust and in your shop let me know I'd love to uh, get some parts for these things I'd love to buy another set of them and um, yeah but that's why flashback arresters and check valves are very, very good. Um, and I guess there's not really a quick way for me to do it, but so in the case, well, kind of all the torch manufacturers that I'm aware of anyways, um, you can get a flashback arrestor with built-in check valves to go on the regulator here, which if you watch some of my previous videos, I have them on my... Uh, larger Victor regulators. You can also get flashback arresters with built-in check valves on to go on the end of the torch. Because like in the case of this torch right here, um, it doesn't have them built in the uh, most anyways of the newer torches do. Um, and then I actually just ordered some Victor uh, quick connects that say that they have uh, built-in check valves. You can also get the Victor Quick Connects with uh, built-in flashback arresters and check valves, um, but they're like $300 for the fucking set of Quick Connects. So, uh, not so excited about that. Um, and then, yeah, you can also get torches themselves that have 
again, built-in flashback arresters and check valves. And uh, very, very, very good stuff to have. Um, at worst, it can, you know, if you get a flashback all the way back to the tank, it can blow you up, uh, your shop up, anybody that's in the shop with you. Um, you know, maybe take out the neighboring shop, depending on how big of a boom it is. And, um, you know, it gets better from there, essentially. Like, that's, you know, kind of worst case scenario. Um, obviously, this one here was not uh, the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. I bet it made a pretty interesting noise when it happened though so like I was saying I was you know I would argue that this stuff is not dangerous at all um, because you know this isn't like this happening here was not the fault of um, any of the any of the equipment necessarily um, because there's you know there really wasn't actually an equipment failure here in any way that I'm aware of any uh, anyways um, probably what happened here is that I would assume is that somebody had a flashback in the torch and didn't shut it off, uh, fast enough and it backfed into here or, um, had some kind of, uh, clog on the tip or whatever that allowed it to, um, back feed into here because of course each one of these regulators should only have their appropriate gas, only acetylene and only oxygen. And if, either one of them have only acetylene or only oxygen, nothing will happen. Um, it's only when you get a combination of two gases in one regulator, one hose, one tank, whatever, that problems occur. Um, so, you know, this, again, depending on how you want to look at it, wasn't necessarily a equipment failure. Um, it most likely was operator error. Um, and also the fact of not having... Um, extra check valves and flashback arresters because if there was extra check valves and flashback arresters this probably never would have happened um well almost guaranteed um as much as a guarantee can be that this wouldn't have happened um so like i say i would argue that this stuff is not at all dangerous but does require a certain level of knowledge and a very deep respect for uh the potential of what can go wrong